you need to be picking up James Cook, okay? You need to be picking up James Cook. He's had double-digit carries two of the last three games. He's had 64 or more rushing yards each of the la- or two of the last three games. We're not going to include Detroit because that was a quick turnaround type of game. But he's had five targets from the la- each of the last two games. This is a player that he was a second-round talent out of Georgia, 63rd overall pick. He has the pass-catching profile. It's clear Naheem Hines is not the most significant role player. I know that Hines increased his workload, but the James Cook passes the eye test. That's what you like to see is he's getting the fantasy points, right? This is the, the first time he's gotten double-digit fantasy points, but rookies tend to increase their workload over the course of the season. And James Cook, as we're getting now into the nitty grid, we've been frustrated by rostering him as of late, but there's no time like the present. Like, what are you going to spend it on? Speculative, like, oh, Beckham. If you've got Odell Beckham, you can drop him for James Cook. Like, you should have already dropped, been dropping Odell Beckham because you, when are you going to play him? When are you going to trust him? At least with James Cook, there's a possibility of if Singletary goes down, you're going to get a handcuff, but also... As we saw in week 13, like it was not a massive blowout game against New England. And Cook just passed the eye test. He got 14 carries against a a tough New England defense, 4.6 yards per carry, and he caught all six of his passes. That is a way to improve and increase the trust of your quarterback and your coach by making the plays over 100 total yards in this game. James Cook is a must-add running back as you get prepared for the fantasy playoffs. Nico Collins, 10 targets in this game. This tied a season high. He caught the touchdown. He had, in half PPR, 11 fantasy points. This is the second time that Nico Collins has hit the double-digit fantasy point mark and yes <coughs> it is the Houston Texans but where else are you going to get 10 targets from right this is if you want to pay up for targets you're going to have to pay off elsewhere but Nico Collins you're going to get the targets and the secondary for the Browns is extremely underrated the rookie there Emerson I believe is his name he's a real shutdown corner this was a late touchdown that got him on the board I would say he's a high-end wide receiver four, maybe wide receiver three, a flex play possibility. We've seen a season high week four for Nico Collins, 82 receiving yards then, but it's also encouraging he's had touchdowns in two of the last four games. And with Brandon Cooks, questionable, maybe he's out the rest of the way. There aren't any other real receiving options. So Nico Collins, you can expect to get a lot of targets moving forward even if it doesn't translate into a lot of yards there aren't a lot of other options for the texans to throw to so nico collins this is a volume play but he's a must add off your waiver wire especially you know that we're approaching bipocalypse here week 14 because we have six teams on a buy and you'll probably need some sort of volume to fill in for you nico collins is uh Definitely one of those players that you can't ignore the targets 10, 7, 9, and 10 each of the last four games. So not a not a great upside play. I wouldn't say he's in wide high end wide receiver two or even wide receiver one contention on a weekly basis. But if he falls in the end zone, like 11 points is going to get you a wide receiver three, which is not going to kill your your flex. So, you know, 10 targets will give you at least the opportunity for scoring fantasy points.